let's now get into the material parts of things. This part is actually very, very simple. And the way I do this next couple of steps is designed for render efficiency. No long hours of rendering, cast deadlines are always getting shorter and shorter. Select the Maya logo. We will assign a shader to it first. There's a couple of ways to assign a shader. As everything in Maya, there are different ways to get the same results. So let's check out a few so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. The easiest way is to just right click in the object and choose assign new material and then select the material from the list. You can also do the same from the rendering menu under the lighting and shading menu. You can also open the hyper shade window. This is the place where you manage all the materials and textures in your scene. To open the hyper shade, go to window, render and editors, hyper shade. The hyper shade is great. It lists the current materials in your scene and you can add new materials by simply clicking on the materials list at the left. Here you can see a long list of materials and other notes that are very very helpful when creating your shaders. For now, our shaders will be simple. Yet another way is to open the rendering shelf and click the plain material from there. You can also create some other notes there, like lights and cameras. As you might notice, my shelf is under the viewport and yours might be over the viewport. I changed this a few years ago. This way I can see the description of the shelf content much better instead of looking up and down. Modifying the Maya interface is not that easy, but it's possible and it's much more flexible than you can think at first. You can't drag and drop stuff, but you could design a whole new different UI for Maya with a few mail code. Mail is Maya embedded language, a simple very powerful scripting language. We'll get into Mail in later episodes. This brings me to yet another way to create a shader. Select the outer ring now, go down here to the command line and type this simple command. Create and assign shader bling. This is a Maya function that explains itself, creates and assigns a shader. The first part is the function name. Next is the type of shader you want to create. In our case, a uh, bling shader. Next, the object you want to assign the shader to. If you leave this empty, you will use whatever you have selected. Anyway, let's go back to shading. Create another bling material for the inner ring. We need to do some cleanup. Everything has the default names and a bunch of history we need to get rid of. Select the Maya logo and change its name to Maya logo underscore mesh. Click the current name to change it. Select the rings and name them to. I'll name this to other outer ring mesh and the next one to inner ring underscore mesh. Now if now if we open the outliner, ah uh, everything is much much better. So if we need to select something in a scene full of different objects, this makes life much easier. Now select the Maya logo again and you can see in the channel box that it has some extra nodes. Those are the nodes we use to model the logo. We don't need them anymore so we will delete them for now. It's important to know that you should only delete the history of a node if you are not gonna do any more changes to the modeling. Now, with the object selected, go to edit, delete by type, history. This will delete the history of the node. Do the same for the two rings. We'll edit the material settings now. Select the Maya logo and press Ctrl A to open the attribute editor. Select the Blin 1 tab if you are not there. Change the material name first. Name it Maya logo underscore shader. Change the color to a deep red. Click in the color swatch to change the color. Modify the eccentricity to 0.5 and the specular roll off to 0.65. Set the specular to full white. Repeat the process for the rings, only changing the colors a little. Now we need to set up our render settings. Open the render setting by clicking this icon here or by going to the window rendering editors render settings. We will render our scene with mental ray. 
Select Mental Ray from the drop down list. If Mental Ray is not there, we need to load it first. To load Mental Ray, go to the Window menu, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. There, find Maya to MR, which stands for Maya to Mental Ray, and click in the Load and Auto Load checkboxes. This will ensure next time Maya will auto load the plugin when we start Maya, so it makes it available in the Rendering Settings window. Close the Plugin Manager, open the Rendering Settings again, and now select Mental Ray from the drop down list. Go to the Mental Ray tab. In the Quality Presets, select Preview. Go all the way down to the Environment section and open it. Click the Create button next to the Image Based Lighting. If you're using Maya 7, 8, or 8.5, this is under the Image Based Lighting section. Once you click the Create button, you will see a big yellow sphere in your scene and its settings in the Attribute Editor. Close the Render Settings. In the Attribute Editor, click the folder icon next to the Image Name field. Navigate to where you extracted the project files. I usually put my images in the source images directory of my project for easy access. Find the bish underscore prob underscore plano dot hdr image that came with the project and click open. This is an image from Paul de Bebek's website and you can get more from his website. If you zoom out in orbit you can see that the image is wrapping the scene. We'll use this for our reflections. Rotate the sphere until there is no black in front of our logo. Click the sphere, select the rotate tool and rotate it in the Y axis. Zoom back in again. Frame your logo to make our first test render. To better frame your scene, in the viewport menu, select View, Camera Settings, Resolution Gate. This will show you exactly what Maya will render. Click the Render button now. The Render View pops up to show us the render. As you can already see this looks very nice. We got great reflections and in the background we have our HDR image. We need to hide that. <laughs> we want it to affect the scene providing us with the reflections but we don't need to see it in the final render. Close the render view and go into its properties again. Under the render stats section uncheck primary visibility. Render again and now as you can see the background is all black but we still have those nice reflections and we have a nice clean alpha shadow we are almost done we only need to add a couple of lights to our scene go to create light directional light this is a very simple light just point it at where you want it to light first press 7 on your keyboard to switch into lighting mode here you can see how light is affecting your scene, so you can tweak light better. Rotate the direction light so it lights from under the logo and to the left, so it lights the side faces of the logo. In the attribute editor for the light, change the intensity to 0.5. Create another light and point this from the top to your right. This will be our key light. Now do another test render. As you can see the logo looks much better now. Now for the final render. Yes, I say final. Open the render settings again. Change the quality preset to production. Under the anti-aliasing quality section, change the filter to Mitchell. This will give us a much sharper image. Well, that's it. Save the scene and render. Go admire your great scene. I'll leave the animation part to you guys. I hope this helps you with your own projects. We cover a lot of ground here. Maya is a very nice application. It's not that easy at first. But hopefully this podcast can ease the learning curve. If you have any trouble or get stuck in the process, please post your questions in the creativecow.net forums. I'll try and answer as much as I can. There's also a great community there that is always willing to help. I'll see you next time in the wonderful world of Maya. This is Baromix for CreativeCow.net.